I want to go back to 2003 when the original Gender Recognition Act was being discussed. And I don't know what you were doing then, I was not paying attention. I was pregnant, I was having a baby, I was looking after two children. None of the organisations that profess to stand for women were paying any attention on, on our behalf. Um, it, the Gender Recognition Act came through because of a case in the European Court of Human Rights. And the judges there said, no concrete or substantial hardship or detriment to the public interest would be likely to flow from allowing people to change their birth certificates so that it lies about sex. They said that this would be an inconvenience that society ought to be able to tolerate. And so the Gender Recognition Act was passed and there was no thought for women's rights and the harm that it would do. And since then we've seen, as we've heard this morning, men in women's prisons, rapists in women's prisons, paedophiles in women's prisons. We've seen men in women's refuges and rape crisis. We've seen men running rape crisis. We've seen men and boys on women's football teams, cricket teams, winning swimming races and cycling races. And we've seen girls in school told that they must share showers and toilets with boys who have confusion about their sex. And we've seen girls told that it's a hate crime if they complain. And we've seen a 4,000% increase in the number of young children over a short number of years presenting at clinics saying they were born in the wrong body and seeking to be sterilized and have their breasts removed. And we've seen people losing their jobs if they talk about this. Because this breaks everything. It breaks the culture of organizations. It creates a culture of fear in order to keep this lie up. So don't tell me there is no concrete or substantial hardship in this, in this legislation or that it's just an inconvenience we have to put up with. And over the past three years, we, women and men like us, have raised and spent over two and a half million pounds on legal cases. Cases like mine, cases like Alison Bailey's, the census, the four women Scotland case, all of these cases just to try and protect our rights. And we've won back, we've won victories, they've been important victories. And what we've shown is that we don't yet have self-ID in this country, even though every council, every police force, um, you know, every part of government believes that, they, believes that we have. We don't yet have self-ID, but nobody, none of the authorities can give you a straight answer as to how the Gender Recognition Act interacts with other legislation that is meant to protect women, particularly the Equality Act. And it's that confusion that harms women. So we've, we've spent money that we shouldn't have to have spent. We've spent time that we shouldn't have to have spent to get the law back on our side. And we're also getting public opinion on our side. So, The, the British Social Attitude Survey, which is run by an organisation called Natsen, which funnily enough Nancy Kelly used to work at, um, does this annual survey of all kinds of uh, attitudes of the British public. And what they ask them, do you support people to be able to change the legal sex on their birth certificate? Three years ago, 59% of people said yes. Last year, 32% of people said yes. That means 10 million people have changed their mind because we spoke up. Because ordinary people like you and me spoke up. But now the Scottish Government wants to open up the Gender Recognition Act even more and they say this will have no impact on women's rights and protections. 
I don't believe them. They're telling us they're not changing the lock, they're just making lots and lots of copies of the key and giving it away to anyone who wants it without any controls. And at the same time, they're planning to bring in a bill on conversion therapy, which will threaten to take away children from their parents if their parents don't support them to go on this pathway. But today is very different from 2003. We are paying attention. We are saying that the word woman is taken. And the word lesbian is taken. And you cannot harm our children. This time round, none of the politicians in that building can say that they did not know the harm that they would be doing if they vote for self-ID. And we will keep fighting, we will keep fighting in the courts, we will keep fighting with our organisations, we will keep fighting in the public square, in the media, write to your MSPs, write to your MPs, talk to your councillors, write to your local paper, come out, talk to your neighbours, talk at the school gate. Women won't weeshed. Yeah.